Interested in learning more about Actinovate? This Debaco University video is for you to see how it may apply to your given growing situation. All right, let's go over using Actinovate for cannabis production. So first off, you should define what Actinovate is, and Actinovate is a biological fungicide with this Streptomyces active ingredient. What is this? This is a naturally occurring soil bacteria that was originally isolated from the roots of uh, linseed plants in England and patented worldwide. It has been shown effectiveness in both indoors and outdoors uh, in a variety of growing situations. We're going to look at some studies specifically looking at this product. So the study here, uh, you can look at it in more detail. This is the evaluation of disease management approaches for powdery mildew and cannabis uh, plants, looking at uh, actinovate as well as a couple other things if you want to look at the study in more detail. So what are the specifics of this study? Well, powdery mildew on cannabis is caused by a particular fungus. It's a fungus that might be different. So keep in mind that there are different versions of powdery mildew, even though common name, they're all the same. Powdery mildew of squash is different than powdery mildew that affects, uh, for example, like your bee bombs or your, um, for example, powdery mildew that affects your lilacs. Um, there's different variants uh, within the powdery mildew. So to investigate disease management options, biological, chemical, and physical approaches were assessed. A powdery mildew susceptible strain uh, was grown indoors with continuous exposure to powdery mildew inoculum to really test the effectiveness of this product. So here's the data looking at the control, which is basically an unsprayed control. Xerotol is basically like a hydrogen peroxide, um, natural fungicide, bactericide, and then actinovate to see how it compares. Overall, we can see the trends are um, that while the control had the highest levels, as would be expected, Xerotol had the lowest levels and actinovate fell somewhere in between. Sometimes not statistically different, sometimes statistically different. So what are other what has other research shown regarding this product? And there's different forms of Actinovate AGs considered to be the agricultural type. Well, previous research has shown that Actinovate AG to be effective at reducing powdery mildew disease severity compared to unsprayed controls, but it was ineffective compared to water control on grape. And compared to both water and unsprayed treatments, it was ineffective at lowering disease incidence. So again, we have to take this into consideration. On squash and cantaloupe, actinova alone was not found to reduce powdery mildew severity compared to the water control. And the efficacy of actinovate is most likely due to the antibiotic and kinase uh, production by the streptomyces, as well as induction of plant defenses following the application. However, in this study, actinovate did not provide significant disease reduction and is not currently registered as disease control on, ca uh, on cannabis within Canada. So actinovate applied to cannabis for powdery mildew control. Uh, however, in the study, Actinovate did not provide significant disease reduction and is not currently registered as disease control in cannabis in Canada. Therefore, its likelihood of being used or its um, suggestion to be used is definitely reduced based on the data as well as the current re registration restrictions in given areas. So again, it's important to do this study to determine if the products you're adding are actually worthwhile, are actually able to re significantly reduce disease uh, to prove that they're worth the investment in time to go through and apply them. So look more at specifics of the study. They did look at some other products. They, did, they do have the materials and methods listed. So this is just one part of the research to become an educated grower.